Hi, this is Matt from AppWorks, and in this video we're going to be looking at a different and I think a considerably improved method for exporting records from a database. So you're probably familiar with the usual method, which is to use the export records command in the file menu. This brings up a dialog box and lets you choose where you want to export your file. And then in here you can um, choose the file format, so you get some different choices including FileMaker, Excel, and a couple of others. Um, and all you can really do when you use this method, I'll just make a file called test, is you choose the fields either from your current layout or from the table. And then of course you can also export related data. So you don't get a lot of other choices here. Um, and that's basically it. So I always uh, advocate in using a script. So we have a script that we're going to be looking at. And that's what most of this video is going to focus on. Um, and the first part of it that I want to talk about is if we want to make a file with a specific name on disk, the export records command can't actually make an output file. So in this window, this is not the calculation dialog, so you can put a variable name in here, but you can't put a, put a calculation in. So you have to have a previously defined variable with a path, and I'm just using get desktop path, and then a string, which is the word invoice export test. I frequently put something in there like grabbing the current date, the current time, something like that, so that if you have an export that recurs or a server side or something like that, you can have it um, work and not overwrite previous files. So our basic export method is a script just like this one. Let's take a look at what that does and what the performance is like. So to start with, I have a whole lot of records in my database, 25,000. I just want 1,000 of them so we can kind of see the performance of what we're looking at. Uh, and I have a little tip for you. So how do you get to a set of the first thousand of these records. Um, and here's, here's what I do to do that. So in the little uh, widget up here, I'll type in record 1001, and that navigates down to the 1001st record in the database. And then I'll use the emit multiple records command, command shift T, and type in a really, really large number, like just a bunch of nines. Then I'm gonna hit return three times, so once, it says, hey, I can't do that many records. Twice accepts that, and the third will emit the total number that it actually can emit, and now my found set is 1,000 records. That tip right there might actually be worth your time for watching the video. And then, of course, you can also use this flip card to go back to the uh, opposite set and go back to all the records that you did emit. But let's just start with these. Let's take a look at our script, and our simple one called simple export um, we'll just run the export records command and it will make a file on disk and we can see kind of what we're up against. So for starters, uh, notice that I'm just exporting five fields, the ID, date, the invoice summary, which is the description, the due date, and the total. Uh, maybe I'll even reduce that. I'll just do like the four fields here. Now that will make a file on disk and um, I can open up that file uh, in Excel and we can take a look at what we see. Um, so that's just these things. And by the way, notice that that was actually really fast. I think that might've been because the data was cached, but the export of just this basic data is very quick for something like only a thousand records. Note that what we don't get here is any kind of customization for the date. If we wanna change anything like to format it differently, we don't, we get very, very little choice. But if you, or for a basic export, that's a pretty good way to do it. Let's talk about what you might wanna do that this does not do, and take a look at our other method. So first, let's take a look at the script that we have in the other method. And it uses, uh, rather than using the export record command, it uses a different command, which is export field contents. And the export field contents will export the contents of a single field, which could be like a container. But in this case, it's gonna be a global field that has a, a block of text that contains all of the records that I want. So the way that this script works is it loops through my records and creates a, a variable called dollar $export line. And it just keeps appending it as it goes. And then when it gets to the end of all the records in the set, it uses the same command we saw before. We're setting the path and then the export field contents command to write a file on disk with all of this data. So this is gonna make a lot more sense if we can debug it and look at it with the data viewer. So as it goes through the script, it goes to the first record and it creates this thing called export line. So here's the first line. Um, 
and it's just putting a couple of pieces of data so the ID and the invoice dollar amount it looks like it's not putting the date it should be putting the date so we can do a little bit of debugging on the code and then when it gets through to the end so we'll just skip through to like the line here where it does the set variable command Um, very, very quickly, that took about a second to go all the way through a thousand records. And now my export line is a thousand lines high. So that has quite a bit of data in it. Then it's going to export the field contents to disk, which takes a fraction of a second. And then just like before, I see a file on my desktop, which I can open in Excel. This one is called improved export. And here we can see it's going to look very similar to the first one. Um, the invoice date, I think, is wrong because I maybe chose the wrong field. So let's take a look at what other things we can do to improve this and what are the other features we get with this method. Um, and I, I think there are several. And in fact, we're going to take a look at some of them in a, in a different video um, because there's really a lot of power in this method for extending it. But let's take a look at a couple of big ones. One of them is a field header. Um, I really want a customizable header at the top of my list that tells me exactly what data is being exported. And this is straight up not possible with the export uh, records command. It gives you a field header that has the actual field names if you choose a, a certain format. Um, so for example, if you use the merge format, it gives you that. But if you use text, it does not. So if I want that, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is I have to add a line of code, and I've actually got another script here called export2, which will have some of that. And um, uh, we can talk about some of the other things here. But all you have to do is before you do your loop, I'm going to set my variable of my export line. I'll just copy this line of code. Um, and this is going to be my header. So this is going to just start with saying, um, the invoice ID, and then I can call it whatever I want. Right, so if I have my field name is called something very different than invoice ID, and I made a lot of typos here. Um, uh, for example, just plain ID would be a really good and normal name for a field, uh, for the ID kit field. I can name it something different in here. And then invoice date, again, I can also do that. and make more typos. And then the total amount, what I might want to call that one is invoice amount, or just maybe amount. And I could just put that in plain text, and now that is going to make that header. Okay, so I notice one other thing. I'm using a, a variable called dollar tab, and that's my delimiter. So I set a variable before I do all this, which just has the tab character here, which you can get in FileMaker in a calculation dialog box by hitting alt tab. Um, option tab on the Mac. Or you can type a tab in some word program and copy and paste it into here. You could also use any other type of delimiter in here that you want, like comma in quotes, like a pipe character, like any kind of a character that you want as your delimiter. And that's pretty powerful and also not possible with the export field contents. Uh, I'm sorry, not possible with the export records command. Um, Okay, so now if we go through here, it's going to write a header. I'm going to take a look and see what's going on with the date. Oh, I see. It's the wrong context. So I actually chose uh, this one from the context of uh, a different one. So this is a kind of a good fix. I'll just choose invoice date, and that's going to correct that error. It's almost as if I put that in there on purpose, right? Um, so now it's going to go through, and let's run this one in debug mode as well. It will set my export line. So now my export line is my header. And then as it goes through my records, it's going to then set each line. And then I'll be able to see this now has my date correctly in there. And it has just the first three lines. And then I'm just going to go ahead and close that and let it finish all the way out. It tells me that it's done. It took very, very little time. That should just overwrite my previous file. I'll close my other ones and open up that new one in Excel which is just a good way to visualize it. And that actually didn't seem to work right. Let me, I think it didn't overwrite the file, so I'm gonna run that script again and open up my export file. 
Ah, here we go. So this one has invoice ID, the corrected date, and the amount. And notice that I have a, a customizable header. Pretty sweet. Now let's get to the next part that I really wanted to show you, which is what do I want? What if I if I want to do something like a calculation in my data? Um, for example, um, a really good example is what if I want something that I for sure don't have a calculated field for, such as the number of line items on my invoice, right? So let me open up another window and take a look at one of these invoices. Some of these invoices have four line items, some of them have five, some of them have one or two or whatever. I don't have a calculated field and I really don't want a calculated field in my schema that has that, but the person who's asking me for my export wants that. Well, how do I get to that? Let's just actually stay with this script here and modify it because all I have to do is this. I add in here um, a, another header and I'll, I'll call this one items. So now my header has a fourth column, which is the items, which is the number of items. And then on my export line, rather than having um, a, a field, So I'll put this in to have a delimiter. I'm just gonna use the count function and I'm gonna count the number of line items from invoice to invoice item and I'll just count the number of IDs. That's pretty simple. Easy calculation you've probably done a lot of times as a FileMaker developer. With that one change, I get the uh, ability to do this. Now I'm gonna pause for a second and say Scripting is absolutely where you want to do most of your work in FileMaker because it's where all of your power is. You can, you can test it much more carefully. Um, you can make a copy of it. You can uh, move it from one file to another much more easily. It's just a much better place to consolidate all of your code than the other places you could also do this in FileMaker, which is the schema. Because um, again, we could have done this with a calculated field. Um, the relationship graph can also do some of the things like this. Um, you can do some of it with like button bars on layout objects, but really scripting is where the magic happens in FileMaker. Okay, so let's run this script now and see what we see. T again, it takes very little time. This will take longer because this is actually doing a bigger calculation because um, it's adding up all those line items, but still it's probably just gonna take a few seconds. And then when it's done, we'll take a look at that file in Excel, just like we did with the other ones. I can see that it's almost done now. Um, so open up that in Excel. And just like that, we see now we have uh, the count of the line items on each of those invoices. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found this video useful. Definitely check out the second part of this one. This is not really a two-parter, but I'm, the other one is gonna be talking about kind of more details in, and some, other, some of the other reasons why this is a really good technique for exporting and uh, hopefully can be very useful in your solutions. Thanks again for your time.